Can you believe I've made 17 episodes of Jungle John's Chats on the Hill? Well, here I am in my kitchen. And what I've decided, even after the walking on the hill, I'm going to continue with my chats on the hill. And thanks for everybody's positive feedback about it. But for this episode, I was lucky enough to have a chat with our very own Mr. Jeremy Pugh on his memories of that day for that match of Wales and Scotland at the old Cardiff Arms Park. I think you're going to enjoy it. And thank you, Jeremy. We had a great chat. Thank you, now. Enjoy. ta -da. Well, Jeremy, thank you for taking time to meet with me. It's the eve before the Scotland game. And I want to take you back now to the last, in, in the 80s, 1987, Wales versus Scotland. And I want to take you back. You've, you've obviously had your first cap against the Americans. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. What was it like getting the call into the what would have been the Five Nations squad then? How did you feel about that? What's the story behind that? Well, you know, how can you say everyone wants to play for Wales? I could be honest, it was never a dream of mine. Coming from Belf, I didn't think anything like that was ever achievable and it evolved rather than anything else. But the strangest thing was I never ever drank in the week, not a drop from only on a Saturday night. And then, uh, how can I say this? One bank holiday weekend, I in them days used to ring the operator to get get a number, and I got chatting to this girl on the phone. Anyway, she was a telephonist in um, Aberystwyth. So anyway, I arranged a blind date, took my old mate Simon Curry with me, and off we went. A lot of beer had. And uh, off the next day, back to Bilth, off down to Aberavon, and I walked in the dressing room. The first thing the boys said to me, we could smell beer on you. No, I was going to try to <laughs> yeah, like that. So then they decided they would play the great funny little trick because I was looking a bit tired, having driven from Aberystwyth to Bilth and then from Bilth Bank all the way down to Aberavon, wherever. I went, they kept passing the ball to me. So I was, you know, how can you say, I was not amused by this stage. There was one time Jonathan Davis made a great huge break up the middle of the field, only to do a complete loop back round, come to the blind side. Come and find his own mate. To pass the ball to me. And Carl Ganaya kept the scrum half, kept passing the ball. Well, I scored a try just before half time. Another try 10 minutes in the second half. And it wasn't that I was in the right place at the right time. It was just wherever I was, they were making it the right place, trying to take the mick out of me. And I had insult to injury time. It was the only time I ever drank before playing. And on the Thursday, I get the call up into the Welsh team. Was that for this, the Five Nations squad, that, yeah? Yeah, for that. Because you'd had your cap for against American Eagles. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was a bit thing, I was going to say myth to say the least, to have in put everything in, given what I thought was the best, and then a bunch of idiots go and do what they did for me, and then next thing I'm flipping uh, in through the back door in that way. So yeah. <laughs> so when you get the call there, Jim, right? Where were you on the morning of the match? Where did you... you... Oh, I, I, well, you, you met on the Thursday. In them days, you were only allowed to meet on the Thursday, so you'd meet Thursday afternoon, you'd train, you'd stay Thursday, Friday, and you'd be with the team, and then you always stayed... You know, at what different hotels, you know, and then you, they bus you into the game. You yeah. Know? So it was, yeah, that was how it went then. Do you remember the bus journey into the stadium, Jed? Do you remember all that? How was that? Was, how did oh, that... I loved that. I used <laughs> to get in the seat by the driver, you yeah. know, the dicky seat, and I'd be yes. there conducting the traffic because you'd have the police and everything. Something's never changed there, Jack, because you like that. We're the first seat now. When you're oh, I love, I love <laughs> yeah. that seat. And many times traveling with you with the seconds. Yeah, you yeah. find J.D. Pugh down the front, so that didn't change then. That was... No, no, I tell you, I love that seat. I tell you, it was lovely when you got the police. And when you're going through the middle of Paris, so I tell you, it's un unbelievable there because they're just hitting the cars with the truncheons <laughs> and the cars are pulling over and you're waiting for someone to get out and start, you know, but... No, I tell you, it's, yeah, it's an experience, that. It's quite enjoyable. Yeah, it always looks it, look, it, it looks good, but it's always nice to speak to someone from, as you say, in the in the seat, right? and you, you arrive then in, in the old Cardiff Arms Park, you're yeah. off the bus, and then you're into the into the stadium, then, is, and you're starting to pick up on the atmosphere, or are you into the, your game mode, Jen? Do you remember how you I, felt? I could be honest, you just, you're a little bit, you're within that bubble, and you don't, 
I don't know, how do you say it? Don't sort of take it fully in. It's not till you go out there and you stand out in the stadium really is when, you know, when you really take it in and you go and have a walk round and then or oh, all of a sudden you think, what happens if I make a big mistake today? And you do get a bit of twitchy about the time then, yeah. We did, this, you know, you know, and then you obviously back you have your team photo, like my team photo, back in the in back into the dressing rooms there. Yeah, yeah, Go, have, have your team photo back into goal. But when you get out there and you're looking at you know a big stadium, seventy eight, seventy nine thousand people, and you're looking at it, you at that moment you feel very vulnerable because you know if you screw up, you could be vilified for life and. I hate to say it, people do like to give you the stick, don't they? They do like to have the stick because yeah. you, know, you were about, you were in the theatre of the highest level. You'd got there, and you, you must, you must have all those emotions. You've got to control them, Jeff. You've got to control them. It's... Yeah, because well, they... you were picked onto the bench, weren't you? Yeah, for, yeah. For that game. Well, staff, staff was pulled, pulled up, injured, got injured in the in the game against England. We when we beat England at Twickenham. In fairness, he carried on. Great player, Staff Jones. You know. Pontypool, am I right there, Jack? Pontypool, yeah, yes. Lovely bloke. Yeah. You know, i got to say, him and Dai Young, I was uh, knocking on the door behind both and I couldn't comfort either of them. They're really nice. So, people. as we just discovered, now the game, you've gone back in the dressing room, you've come, come back out, you're all lined up for, for the anthem. How did that feel, standing with the anthem? I mean, I, I know as a supporter, there's tears in my eyes. And I'm just watching before the anthem. That anthem comes on our Welsh national anthem. How did that feel for you, for yourself when that struck up? Strange comedy. It makes you glad you're not starting because you're so pumped up. You struggle to walk. Yeah. And although it's a huge benefit for everyone, it's the best in the world. Mm. But you've got that much adrenaline going. It takes a couple of minutes to get run that adrenaline off. It actually, you get over pumped and a bit stiff. Did you, you know, you obviously, oh, yeah. you obviously say to me sometimes the hairs go, they, yeah. you must have been. You know, your hairs, everything. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, you have to have a little stop in a couple of times because you've got to just get that swallow in them. You know what I mean? It's to get the there. next word out, you're, yeah. You're just listening to it and it is, yeah, I feel extremely privileged. Yeah, there's not many, as you say, with the numbers on the badge. There aren't many actually internationals, are there? Because you see the numbers, you've pointed that out to me many times, of the actual numbers of Welsh internationals. Well, when I got my number, 846, eight, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, when you said that to me before, Jerry. Isn't it? And I thought I'm going to be about 10,998. <laughs> and and it, it, yeah, it does make you think then, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it was just, it's a question that, I'd, you know, you might have been asked before as a as, as, uh, rugby lady watching, been asked before, but it's, it's, I think you've really described what that's like. You can see it now with some of the players, some of the dead ice cold, and some of them, the emotion just comes out. And it's just, what that must be like is only for someone to experience it, really. I mean, I love to see people show an emotion. Yes. I think that shows the true character of a person. Yeah. Some people turn around and give it a bit of stick. I got to be honest, for me and all the boys, really, you know, it's it's great to see how much it means to people. Yes, I mean, it's everything that we love about the start of Wales when they're playing, yeah, yeah. It's everything. It sets us all up, don't we? We have that. We have, we get that na our national anthem done, and we're ready. Okay, so you after the anthems, Jay, yeah, you're back. You're back then. Back onto the bench. You're, everybody's pretty pumped up, but you're sad. I can imagine you. I know what you like when you got rugby head on. You put you in the Welsh shirt. You sat on the bench. Within 15 minutes, your good friend, Staff Jones, who we've been talking, gets an injury. You get a nudge. There was a slight delay, I seem to remember. What happened yet? Was it, you got onto them. It seemed to be everybody in Bilf knew what was coming and who was coming. How did it feel, Jeff? Did it feel a long delay for you? Or you... Well, you're up in the stand. I gotta say, very nervous. Were you? Oh yeah. You, when you when you're on there, you're on. But when you're coming on, like you you then you start to realise this. Like, is... It's like it's don't be wrong. It, it's lovely. Everyone's singing and and yeah. they, but you're on. Yeah. And then you're coming on, and it's enormity of that situation. Is it? Is it like? 
I, I felt proud coming on playing for Belf. And that's nothing, that, that, as you said, if we cut you in half, you'd be half Belf and half Wales. You've said that yourself. Is it that, that what I'm trying to the emotion and the awareness as you're getting down on there, right, this is it? This is, or is it just game no, time ahead? It would be more, when you're waiting, you come in up that tunnel, it's, i got to say, if the first thought, you have a little bit of doubt. Yeah. Because you're looking round at all that, and then you cross the white line. And you're on the pitch. And then... The Bill, Bill McLaren spots you. There's no, there's, no, <laughs> there's no nothing then. It's just, yeah, well, from that moment on, it's just, you're in, you're in game mode, and... There's no crowd, there's no nothing. You're switched on into the yeah, finding, finding yeah. your position, finding, you yeah. Yeah, you don't notice any. It's hard to say you just that you don't notice the crowd, but you don't notice the crowd because mm. you're so focused on what you're doing, you know, because you, you imagine making a mistake like that. Well, I, I could tell you where I was. I was in London, right? And I had a TMRI. I don't mind telling you. I've told you that before because I'd said... I, it was difficult to explain to people that were watching the game with me and I did try and get it out. But they got back in the game and started watching you. But you have a story around what happened in Bill's Rugby Club and a certain wedding. So, right, Joe, as you, as you run on, right, as I said, I was, I was in London, in a bar in London, in the East End, and I was explaining to everybody that I knew this man. And, and, but you have a story, right? That obviously the rugby club, when they realised that JD Pugh was running on the pitch to play for Wales, they exploded. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't there, but I was told a small story, and it went like I went on the field, and everyone in the club hopefully was very pleased, and they were jumping a bit. And my my dear cousin, and he's going to hate me for saying this, is that Philip? <laughs> He had the big tear in the eye. <laughs> Do you want to say it again? Yeah, yeah the big tear. The big tear. And uh, so I said, which I was you know, really pleased. It's lovely that I, he, was, a lovely, happy, he yeah. was happy for me, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, allegedly, someone comes in through the door of the club. They were in the wedding across the other side of the cricket pitch in the Catholic Church. To find out whether or not I'd gone on the field, and then they got it, and then next thing they run back across to the church, and it was a bit of a uh, thing. Happy days in the church. So uh, I had a bit of divine providence. Yeah, they did. God was on you. God stopped. Yeah, yeah. You know, God stopped. So, I said, "No, you can't, you can't get married." <laughs> no, no, it was quite clear. <laughs> when, when I was told that story, I've got to be honest, it does make you, yeah, it makes you feel quite proud. Then you know. Well, it comes after the achievement. Or waiting to go onto the pitch, I can imagine there's something you were reflected on. To the uh, sorry to use the word achievement again, but what you had achieved by stepping onto the pitch when you heard stories like that. Yeah, it's just how do you say you're never king in your own country. No, but uh, it was nice that people were there to support you rather than the opposite. Yeah, and it's a it's a lovely story and. I've been told it as, as well, Jeff, uh, and I've been through many people to explain what happened on that day, but the rugby club, there must have been beer everywhere. It was fantastic. But anyway, back, back to the game now, right? You, you get onto the pitch, you're in game, game mode, you have the first, your first scrum. How did that feel, that first scrum at international level? Well, I've got to be honest, I was come up now against my lifelong friend yes. since that game, Norrie Rowan. And we are still lifelong friends. I've been in contact with him a couple of times this week. He was going to come down and stay, but uh, Scott Hastings was coming with him. But unfortunately, Scott's health has taken a bit of a dip and things he's got to sort out. Okay. And I hurt my sciatic nerves, so I couldn't go to the game. So Norrie didn't want to come down to be on his own. But yeah, I've got to say from that game, I took a lot of lifelong friends and it's and it's been... That, that that's important to me as well, not just... Uh, from that first scrum, best yeah, friends from. The, yeah, <laughs> from the first scrum. I went on at loose head, like mostly I played tight head. So my job was to get the prop out of the scrum. And if you can imagine, I was, a, well not out, but get him up as high as I can from my hooker. And i got to be honest, I, I just concentrated on driving. And the problem is I went, we went straight out, I remember, the, top, yeah. out the top of the scrum. The ball came out, then Jiffy just went boom, dribbled through. And uh, 
I'd have been out. I could have scored it. I'd have been a bit quicker. Because <laughs> you were there. That was a jiffy try, wasn't it? Yeah. The ball he, popped he just, out. He just stuck the ball through. Tremendous play. Oh, yeah. Which is, which is, this is why that game, that, this game that you played in, Scotland and Wales, will be one of the ones that will be remembered. They're always a classic game, aren't they? When the Scots and Wales go toe-to-toe. Yeah. You never know quite what's going to happen. And that this is part of history. This is part of Wales and Scotland's proud history. That game, that try that Jiffy scored. Oh, it was, yeah, don't be wrong. It was, I watched, I didn't watch the game. Where people might find that funny, but I didn't watch the game for years yeah. after. And then when I watched it, and then, yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty sharp game. I, I gotta say, it people, was. People talk about the pace of the game from today's game compared to then. I don't know. I and what was, st- the guy who had a really good game as well, Jen, I, I told you about this, was, was the number two that day. Oh, Ian Watkins. Didn't he have a good game that day? I thought... i got to be careful here because Kevin Phillips was on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just been speaking to Kevin to okay. find out how his son was today. Now, okay. so if Kevin gets older, this and I'm not saying that. <laughs> Kevin Phillips was the best soccer ever. Right. right. <laughs> uh, Ian Watkins did have a very good game. Yeah, i got to say, in fairness to him. He picked up a try that day as well, didn't he? He did. He did. Well, Jeremy, this is this is quite a collection you got you of your memories of... Uh, your playing days, you know, it's uh, it's quite something to see. Oh, thank you. There's a few of my father's in there from his uh, days as well before me, which was quite nice. Um, but w- when you see this, you realise how long you had a, a really enriched rugby career, didn't you? If it was in many places, you're going to see many people, yeah. Oh, I've been I've been fortunate. Yes, extremely fortunate. It's just, it's just, you just get a picture of what we talked about before you came on that field that day. This is sometimes possible you can walk past this and think, yes, yes, that's what it was all about from that day, you know. You mean and, as they call it in this house, the big headed, big headed cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually look there, oh, where's the? This is something here where your father, when he was mayor of Bilt. Is it and the Bilt he, shirt there, the centenary year there? Yeah, and he presented me. Um, you had a, uh, you had a, a that's right, from the town, yes, uh, that's up there, isn't it? No, that one up there, which is very interesting, we got that from the, when we won the Triple Crown. All right, back and, in that game again and, now, are you? And it just shows the difference between amateurs and professionals. We didn't get a tie, we didn't get a blazer, we got glass pot. Yes. And a brute thing that used to hang around a brute, bo- brute bottle that tarnished within about two months, and it just says... Presented to Jeremy Pugh, Triple Crown, 1988. It just gives people understanding then, of how poorly you were treated in them days. How the game is yeah. moving yeah. all the time, isn't it? Yeah, but it's fascinating to see, Jeff. But every time I come in your house, right, always had this conversation. And you know we're going to talk about that. Yeah, unfortunately <laughs> I do. <laughs> if we look at this picture here, it's a great picture, great memory of when Aaron Evan picks up the ball from his own wing and sidesteps the whole of Scotland, sends them, and a lot of those players are probably spinning now somewhere, and he scores it, and he scores under the post. But my my take on that, being a built boy, he should have passed, Jeremy. What do you think? Well, everyone said, great try, Ian. I said, you greedy person. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a flashback. I thought, imagine if he did pass and I dropped it. I thought, good try, good try. <laughs> well, what I was worried about, Jeremy, you, you'd have you'd caught her. I'd stop this. This is the East Terrace. You yeah. ploughing into that, who would have stopped you in there? <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I'd have got down in time. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, I thought, I remember thinking, you greedy sod. And then, <clears throat> when you have a flashback, going back, don't forget the big stage, a lot of people watch you on telly. Yeah. Could you imagine if you'd have dropped it? Oh, God. But there you are, Jeremy, with the iron ground in it. But, um... That was a hell of a try. I don't give him his due. What a try. It yeah. was a great try. It's one yeah. of the yeah. tries that go to, to watch, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody was like Jiffy's try in that same match. You know, it was just... Uh... Oh, Jiffy scored some tries better than that. Let mm. me tell you, that man was world class. Yeah. And I don't use the word slightly. Yeah. Out of the people I played with and against, he'd be in the team. He was something special. Mm.